All right, so time for composition of functions part two. So I thought that since I, I made my introductory video on this topic, um, I thought I'd give you a problem and see if you could do it. All right, so can you solve this problem? Where what I have here is that I have linked these two functions together. All right, so a function is an input and an output, meaning that a number goes in, you do whatever the function says to do, and then you get another number back out. So when you think of a function, think of number in, number out, or input and output. That's how you think about it. Now, if that's what it is, then I can link two functions together. All right? So here's, here's what I want to see if you can do. Can you find this one function that works just like these two when they're linked together? That's what the composition is, all right? Okay, so you got the concept. You know what I'm looking for. Um, but how about this? Let, let's illustrate this, how I'm linking these together. Uh, so you give me a number, like any number. It's kind of like a magic trick where you pick a card, any card. Give me any number you want, and I'll show you how all this works with a number. Uh, okay, so one. All right, so we'll put one in. So let's say our original number that we plug in is one. And we do what this function says, 4 minus x. x is the input. x is always the input in every function. So 4 minus 1. So that's going to be 3. So we're going to put 1 in, and we're going to get 3 back out. And when I'm linking these together, I'm just saying, now take the output of this one and make it the input of that one. So it says 5 minus 3 squared. So it says 5 minus 9. And so our final answer is negative four. So with these linked together, then you put one in and you're gonna get negative four out, okay? Now, all right, so here's what I'm asking you. Can you, without me telling you uh, from the information in the previous video, can you figure out what goes in there, what formula is supposed to go in there, where if I put one in, then I would get negative 4 out, okay? Or it's not just 1 and 4. It's like whatever number I put in here and I get out there as a result of linking these together, I would get the same input and output over here. All right, so uh, maybe you could pause the video, see if you can figure out what that is, and then I'll tell you what it's going to be. All right, there it is. That's what is supposed to be in this box. Let's try it out. So if you put 1 in there, how does this work? 1 squared, okay, take the opposite of that, that's negative 1, plus 8 times 1. So here I have 8 minus 1, that's 7. And what's 7 minus 11? That's negative 4, so it works. You put 1 in, you go through these linked together, you get negative 4 back out. You, here's the composition. You put one and you get the same final result, negative four back out. That's what a composition is, okay? Why did I call it f of g? See that circle there? That is not a multiplication. We read that f of g. Why did I write it like that? Well, because, the, you know, math, there's lots of symbols, and part of doing math is learning to read all the symbols. So when you see this composition notation, this you know, as these two functions are linked together, this one is the first one in the link, and that one is the second one in the link. So if I look back up at my diagram up there, is G first and F second? Is that the order they're linked together? Yeah, G's first and F is second. So that would be the correct notation. There's the formula that does the job. This box here, this formula, behaves just like those two linked together. And I think the numbers can prove it to you. Okay, so I gave you a chance to try to figure that out on your own. Um, what if you couldn't do that? Well, all right, here's the solution. Here's how you find f of g of x, all right? So I, that's how I would have done it in my last video. If you need to look at this in detail, then I'll, I'll just have you pause the video. And if you have something to ask about, if you have a question, you can let me know, okay? All right, now I wanted to do something that was different than just having equations, all right? So I'm gonna give you a scenario with this next problem. 
And you're going to think about the scenario. Okay. So here's the scenario. Suppose we buy an item and the item will first have a $15 discount applied. Okay, so you, I don't know. Maybe you have some coupon or something or it's on sale. So there's like the on the shelf price of the item and you take it up to buy it and there's a first a $15 discount is applied. And then second after that, 8.25% sales tax will be added. Okay. All right. Now, I, I, I take it you bought something at a store before, so you understand what I'm saying is happening. Okay. Now, in order for us to do a little math, uh, let's let X be the price of the item before there's any discounts or taxes. So that's like the on the shelf price of the item. Uh, can you find these things? Can you find F of X? which is a formula to tell me the final price of the item if only the discount is applied. Can you tell me G of X, the final price of the item, if only the tax is added? And then can you find the composition G of F? Now I've covered up the meaning of that. Think for a second. Do you know what this means? Like if you find this formula, what is it going to do? All right. So part of learning some math is learning how to do the math. And another part of it is learning, say, if we have some scenario that we're applying it to, you've got to figure out what it all means, okay? So tell me what g of f is. Well, well so g of f means that we're going to link the functions together f first and g second, okay? So wouldn't that be the... The function's going to give us the final price if first you calculate the discount, you apply the discount, and second, after the discount, um, you apply the tax. All right? Okay. Now, I don't do a lot of shopping, but, you know, I do, I do believe that's the order that things work if you buy something with a discount and sales tax. That first the discount's applied then the sales tax. But like I said, I don't, I don't do a lot of shopping. I don't know. I'm pretty sure that's right though. But that's what G of F would do, okay? It would calculate the final price if we do the discount first and the tax second, all right? And that's what would really happen right there. Okay, so let's find all this stuff. So I think F of X will be easy to find. So F of X, what's that do? The final price of the item, if only the discount is applied, well, the discount's $15. Wouldn't that be like this? You take the price and you subtract 15. Pretty simple. So there's f of x. There's my first answer. That's this function f of x. What about g of x? What's uh, g of x supposed to do? It gives me the final price if only the tax is added and nothing about the discount. Okay, well, okay. Uh, sales tax 8.25% and X is the price of the item before any discounts or taxes. So let's say G of X would be you take the price plus, do you know how to, how to calculate percentage discounts and taxes and so on? Do you know how to do that? Well, we would take the original price plus 8.25% percent of the price. That's the price plus 8.25 percent of the price. That's adding the tax in at 8.25 percent. Now you could actually just use this formula if you want to, but these are also like terms. It may not look like it to you, but but let's say quick example. What is 7x plus 4x? Like those are like terms. Those are both x's, right? Uh, you have seven x's and you add four x's well, that will be a grand total of 11x. 7 plus 4 is 11x. You can do the same thing with these. 1x plus 0.0825x. So let's use for g of x this. 1.0825x, given that they're like terms, right? So originally I said take the price and add to it 8.25% of the price. That's how we'll factor in the tax. But the same thing as doing this. Take the price, multiply it by 1.0825. All right, so I've got g of x. 
so f of x, g of x, which factors only the tax. Okay, and then last I wanted this g of f. Okay, so how do you find g of f? What are, what are the general instructions? If you want g of f, you take the f function and you plug it into the g. That's how it's done. All right. So well, let's see. Let's do that. Um, let's see what is g? There it is. And we're gonna plug the f into it. Okay. So this is like all this. That's g, but it's like I erase the x because I'm gonna put something. I'm gonna put an input into it, and the input goes where the x goes, and the input's this other formula which is f. So I need to put x minus 15. Okay, so that's how the composition is done. Now, let's see. I guess to to work this out, I would multiply this number through there. So I would get 1.0825x minus 15 times, well I don't know what that is, I don't know what 15 times, let's see, 15 times 1.0825, so that's going to be 16.2375, okay, alright, so I've got my g of f of x, let's write that down, I want to give you all my answers in one place and put a box around them say that I'm committing to a final answer. I did math elsewhere, but here is my final answer. And there it is. So I found each thing. I found the function that applies only the discount, the function that applies only the tax, and the function that first applies the discount and then adds the tax. That's what that formula would do, okay? All right, so do you understand all that? Do you see what I was looking for? Do you understand it in the context of the problem? And do you see my final answers for everything? Let's do one more thing, one more thing. Let's do this, let's try it out, okay? so. Is, is this a, a good model for what I was doing a minute ago? Because I said, first you take your price and you subtract $15 by way of the discount, and then with that number you factor in the tax. Yeah, that's the, exactly how those are done. That's the order of those individual procedures or functions. And that's all a function is. Let's try it out. So how much did the item cost? Let Just give me a number, any number, Go, well, not any number, any number that could be a price. I don't know, how about a nice round number? Let's say the price of the item was $50. How much is it after the discount? Uh, it will be $35 after the discount. And then you gotta add the tax to that. So let's see, 35, that's not gonna be a nice round number, but that's okay. It, it would always round. 37.8875. Now, in reality, this will be rounded to probably the you know the penny, the nearest penny. But I'm I'm gonna just write down the whole number, okay? And you might think that that's silly, but I, for the purposes of my illustration here, doing the math, I want the whole number. So that's what I got there in my calculator. All right, see it? 37. Okay. 8875. Now, if this is right, if this is one function that goes through this entire process in one step, one box, one step, one function, applies the discount, then adds the tax. If this works, then when I put in 50, it had better give me this number. 37.8875. Seven five, which we'd round up thirty-seven dollars and eighty-nine cents. Okay, but let's see. Seeing is believing. I'm a, I'm a big believer in that. So I want you to see it. So I'm going to take one point oh eight two five, 
and I'm gonna put 50 in there. Okay, so times 50, and then I got a minus 16.2375, right? That's what that function says to do. All right, put it in my calculator. And if I'm if I'm right about that, then it gives me 37 point. It gives me the exact same thing. Well, that's the idea, right? One function that serves the purposes of these two working individually. That's what a composition of functions is.